Grant is. Okay, so everybody know about Oscar. You don't know who Oscar Grant was? Oscar uh, Grant. I heard about oh, okay, you heard about the story. You, did everybody see the video? Yeah. yeah. Okay, if you didn't see the video, and it was such a talked about incident, right? I would just suggest that you take a look at the video. This way you can draw some inference of how you should feel about what you've seen, and then ask the question, was that right? Because the reality, what we have today that's happening in our community is the police murdering our children, you, our future, on a consistent and regular basis. The Malcolm X Grassroots Report reported that every 36 hours, a black man, a black woman, or a black child would be killed at the hands of the police. And that doesn't even take into account the brown brothers, our Asian brothers, that are also being killed at the hands of the police on a regular and consistent basis. And what we can say really, in essence, that not 36 hours, but I would go as far as to say every 18 hours or less, a black man, brown man, black woman, brown woman, black child, brown child will be killed at the hands of the police. This is an epidemic, and it's happening across the country. I was a little hurt when Larry asked to name someone that you know that might have been killed by the police, and I heard Oscar Grant. Does anyone know of anybody else in Oakland? Let's, let's, let's talk about our community in Oakland who has been killed by the police. Alan Luther. Okay. That's right. Somebody else. The reason why it hurts me is because... If you don't realize what's happening at, with your next door neighbor, this is your city. You live in Oakland, right? I'm talking about a part of the region of the world where many things have taken place. This city has been responded in such a way that everybody across the world recognizes what happened in Oakland. As you know about the Black Panthers, everything that happened in the early 60s with the hippie movement and the things that... Cal Berkeley. And I could go on and on about the historical aspect that happens in this community. But this is also important. In 1950, Oakland, California was the first city where it was a commission held on police brutality. In the country. <laughs> in the country. Mm -hmm. Right now, you're sitting on the scene, you're seeing on another historical event where the Oakland Police Department may go in receivership because of the brutality and the killing that has taken place again against black and brown men in this community. This is historical. We, be, we really need to ask the question, what is really happening? I mean, you cannot go outside. I mean, you know, all of you, I'm sure, know somebody that has died at the hands of the police, if not the police, of course, another person that might look just like them. All of us know someone. But more heinous is the fact that we have police officers in our community that we pay to, pr to protect and serve That's right. that are killing us unjustly, all because they thought that I was pulling out a gun and it's my wallet. He asking for my wallet and he shoots me cold. Or he thinks because I'm running, I'm trying to pull up my pants, I'm getting shot because I'm reaching for a weapon. Oscar was murdered. And you need to hear this. It was the first time in California state history that a police officer was charged, arrested, and convicted for murder. The first time in California state history. That's this is a government class. You know how long California been in existence? Who we knows? need to ask the question, why would that be the first time? It's not like Oscar was the only person murdered in the state of California by the police. It's happening on a regular basis, on a consistent basis, every day. Just in the city of Vallejo, in the last three months, seven police shootings, five fatalities, three of those young men, they said, have replica guns. Now, I'm, I know all of you are high school students, and you're pretty bright, right? And you know a replica gun, don't shoot bullets. But if you happen to have one, if you happen to have one, would you pull it out and point it at the police officer and, and think it's going to kill him? That's committing suicide. So the question really needs to be asked, are these really the young men's replica guns that they find in them that they're utilizing to justify the shooting? There's a lot of questions that need to be asked. And the most important people that can ask these questions are you, our 
children are dying in these streets. We are in a state of emergency. And if you don't do anything about it, what kind of future are your children going to have? I mean, you need to really ask that question. If you're looking for having a future in this world, in this so-called USA, you need to ask, what kind of future are my children going to have if I'm seeing all this today and I haven't even stood up to say anything about it? It is important that you become involved. It is important that you begin to pay attention. And it's important that you recognize that the time we're in is really, really an important time in this period of our lives, especially yours. Mm -hmm. We're on the tail end of it. We know what's happening. And we know and very clear that if you don't do anything about it, it's only going to get worse. How much time do I have, by the way? Go, go ahead. You're, you're, you're so nine, so we're okay. going to talk to you, you know, plenty of time. Okay. So I don't want to rush this, but I hope you feel me. Because what happened to my nephew is real painful to me. And then when I look out here and look at you and then think about this police killing Trayvon Martin, somebody look just like you, somebody your age, that hadn't even done anything. All he trying to do is enjoy life and gets murdered by a so-called wannabe cop. Right? Why? So we need to ask, is racism more prevalent today than it ever has been in the United States? Can anyone answer that question? This is a question to you right now. Is racism more prevalent today than it ever has been in the U.S. historical existence? It's a question. Can anyone answer that question? What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> okay, so we say racism depends on the situation. Somewhere like Idaho or Montana is a white man killed a black man. It's not from the news, but you hear a white man killed a black man. And you know, Oakland, the predominantly known state, I mean, city in the country, is going to be put all over the place. So it's like, like you said, it depends on the situation, it depends on like the terms where it's at and whatnot. You know? Because okay. stuff is happening in the South all the time, and no one says anything because it's like normal out there. You know? Okay, I, I, I follow you. So, what about this word, white supremacy? Do you, do you understand what white supremacy is? <laughs> Has anyone ever looked that word up? And what is what is white supremacy? White domination of white race. Okay, she said white domination of white race. Does anyone have a different? Go ahead. Oh, supremacy, like white supremacy, is like when they say that like they're better than you because they are white, so they're a higher class of human being. I mean, which is all good. So the point that I'm trying to, you want this door open? Okay, the point that I'm trying to get to is that we're not connecting what's really happening in the U.S. Not only is it racism, but there's a form of brutality that's being initialized by the government in such a way that it begins to raise the question what is really happening. Now here's an example. In the 80s, right, there was 779,000 black men in colleges, only 150,000 locked up. Reagan comes into power, the drug on war takes off, and now what we have today, the United States has the biggest prison institution in the world. 2.4 million men are locked up. The biggest in the world, and we're not the biggest country in the world, but the biggest prison institution in the world. Over 80% are black and brown men. Right now, today, we have less than 150,000 black men in colleges and over a million black men locked up. Sounds a wrong. total reversal. A good book that I like to suggest that you all consider getting and just taking a read is by Michelle Alexander titled The New Jim Crow. Mass incarceration in the time of color blindness, right? And what
what she's saying here, and this just is in the title, mass incarceration in the time of color blindness is the fact that many of us have assumed and believed that there is real justice and equality <laughs> in this judicial system that we exist in. And what she does is she breaks it down so that you can see clearly that it is not. We're dealing with a racist, injustice, criminal justice system when it comes to people of color. If you walk into that system, there's a whole different venue of experiences you were experienced versus a young white man walking into that same system and what his experience is in. The reason why Oscar it's become known to all of us more so is because of the fact that there was video. And even with the video, the argument was made that he didn't intentionally do it. It was an accident when in reality he stated himself that he thought Oscar was reaching for a gun. The same justifiable reason that we all seem to have, or, or all police seem to have when they try to justify killing a young man of color. And not just young men. Young women are being killed of color on a regular basis now by the police. You know, and I bring this out because it's so important that you recognize what's happening with your next door neighbor. What's happening right here in your city. Because when you walk out these doors into the real world, at least you'll have some knowledge of what you're getting ready to venture into. You're not in school just simply to be educated. Because in reality, getting an education could mean that you're being miseducated. Getting a degree don't mean you're educated. Hear what I'm saying? We all aspire to go to school, to get a degree, to become employed and live life and just have some pleasancy and enjoyment and comfort in life. But being educated does not mean that you get educated in a sense of consciously understanding what's happening around you in this world. You're here to be educated in such a way that you're consciously aware of the surroundings and how you can effectively begin to change the condition of this society so that it can be better for your children. You know, and so it's my hope that this pain that these mothers experience that you feel, you know, because the reality of it is, is that any one of us would die tomorrow and your mom would be crying. I'm personally tired of seeing teary-eyed mothers crying about their son or their daughter being murdered by the police. And if you can't feel that emotionally, you're disconnected from the reality of the society and what we are experiencing. Emotionally, in because it's really your children that you're trying to set this world right for. And if you plan on having families, you have to start now. You have to begin to think what is it that we expect this world to be, this society to be like, when we're in the position to so called be employed, we're in the position so so called to be a father and a mother. What kind of future will my children have? Because if you got it bad now, which you know you do, what will your children's future be like if you don't begin to stand up and speak to the issue? It's my hope that I've said something that at least planted a seed so you begin to, to begin to take a look, so that you begin to take a book and pick it up and read and begin to see some of the realities of what we experience and what we're seeing. Remember this book by Michelle Alexander titled The New Jim Crow. There are more men incarcerated today than was in slavery. That's saying something. When Obama was elected, there were more guns sold in the United States in its history. When Obama was elected, the rash of police killing has just Shot straight up. We need to ask the question, have we really, really gotten past a system where it is truly justice and equality for all? If you believe that, I suggest
until she began to really begin to look at what's happening across the United States and reevaluate that thought. Many people are dying because many of us are walking sleep, because many of us don't feel or haven't felt that there are some injustices that are occurring in this country. When there's an opportunity to be a part of uh, an event like this, come out and hear. Come out and understand. Take a look at this. In New York alone, and I'm going to say a few more things, and I'm going to sit down. In New York alone, over 750,000 young men have been stopped and frisked by the police. And as we know, many of them has also been incarcerated behind these uh, wrongful stop and frisk. Yes. And then many have died at the hands of this stop and frisk. Alan Bluefoot, right here in your own city, a senior at Skyline High School, an exceptionally well student. Matter of fact, his uncle now, the principal, or I guess he's the assistant principal, has come here. Cousin-in-law. Cousin-in-law. Um, was shot and murdered because of the same thing. Sure. Okay. Shot Thank you. three times, and then it's reported that he was in a gunfight with the police. And as you know, if you're following this story, if you pay attention and you begin to ask questions and you listen and you read, what you'll find is that we need to ask the question, why does the police always criminalize us first and say, you deserve it? Young man, you know, you got a history, you know, this class three times, got an F from this class. And so you really not really fit to live in this society. So in order to justify me killing you, I got to tell everybody how you had a, a, a speck of weed in your back sack. And you got an F in class. As a matter of fact, you hadn't really attended school that enough to justify living in this society. You know, or the young man that's been locked up in juvenile hall. You know, because he stole his mom a car and she wanted to teach him a lesson. And so she had the police send, send him to juvenile hall, and then now I come out as a police officer on the spoken part and says, this young man been in juvenile hall for stealing cars. What's your mama car? You just borrowed it? Not really many to have any harm, but all of a sudden the world got to hear that you was a criminal because you done stole a car in such a way that everybody think that you're just that bad character. Yeah, he's one of them that don't need to live. Trayvon Martin, you heard the story. How they criminalized this young man. And yet, he hadn't done nothing wrong. He was just a virgin in this world trying to live, never been incarcerated, never been locked up. Maybe he missed a class or two. But is that the right for us to be killed? Is that justification to tell the world that, that made me look bad as if I've done something because I missed a couple of classes to be murdered? This is happening on a regular basis. You know, I, I mean, I don't know any of you. But my assumption is that you're trying to do something. You're sitting in class today. You're trying to graduate so you can move on in your life, so you have all the best intentions in the world, and for you to die tomorrow at the hands of policemen and to criminalize you is wrong. And until you feel that and say, man, that is wrong. I knew that brother. I knew him. Why did he say that? And begin to come with people, form this unity, get involved in the movement to bring about this change. Your children will not have a life of pleasancy. Matter of fact, you'll be praying every day when they go outside them doors that they don't be murdered, not just by one of us, but by the police who we think are here to protect and serve. Uh, um, they said that uh, Alan Bluefer was a bad kid in school or something like that. That's he didn't good, good grades. That's not yeah, true. He was a decent kid in school. He was going well in school. Uh, I know. Getting ready to graduate. So you know him. Yeah, you, like you've seen the reports, friend. though, about the police. How, you've seen the reports from the police. You see how they criminalized yeah. him? Because yeah. even if he wasn't, see, that he was shot down murdered by the police. The even situation. if he wasn't. The, the fact is, is that do the police have the right to murder us like they're murdering us in our communities because of the color of who we are or because of the state repression that has taken place, yeah, yeah. or because of the protection of this so-called government in such a way that everybody that appears to be doing something wrong, we need to set them straight. Yeah. I want to.
want to thank you for allowing me to share a few words. As a matter of fact, I do have a few papers here. This, this is um, papers um, that just have a lot of literature in it about things that's happening across the country. Um, feel free to take one as you go out or whenever you leave the class. Uh, it's just black news, not just black news, but brown news, people of color, or what's happening around the world, or especially here in the United States. Around the world. Uh, around the world, too, really. Uh, I, I, I tend to focus more on the United States, but it's really uh, around the world. Because we need to be worldly knowledge of what's really happening in this world. You know, and that's why I was telling you, it was pain, you know, not kind of painful, it was painful for me, for many of you to not know what's happening in your own community. I'm going to say this and shut up, because this is really important for us black and brown brothers, right? When the grassroots report came out with that report about uh, 36 hours, a black man, black woman, a black child being killed, well, the Department of Justice decided, hold up, hold up, you want to tell on us, well, let's tell on you. So they come out with a report to tell us that since 19, since 2002 to 2000, basically today, over 8,000 or 9,000 black and brown men, or no, specifically black men, have been killed per year. 8,000 to 9,000. Well, you know how many that is per day? That's 22 black men per day dying at the hands of somebody who looked like me. We didn't even take into the equation of brown man. Now, if that's true, we are in a state of emergency. Read the black man. Love your brother, because we are a brother keeper. And if it had not been for you in this classroom, not specifically, but you, just the people like yourselves in this classroom, had you not videotaped what happened to Oscar Grant on that platform, none of us would know who Oscar is. So me, my sister, our family, owe much love to you, and we thank you, and we are our brother's keeper. Anytime you see a young man stopped in those streets, just post yourself. Sacrifice a few minutes of your life, because you might save somebody else's life. And have your cameras ready to video. Thank you. Revolution.